it is a more to come. That right now we are talking about enrolling a 103 spending entities to launch the LPA across government so that everybody can be a part and be able to benefit as they work along. Okay, so good. So we because we the, the time is so short, I want us to talk uh go so much in depth with this LPA uh, thing. So you been, you say you want to bring on board all of the 103 entities, right? How far we are now? Okay, so like like you said, everybody knows that LP is not a it's not a it's not a strange name. It has existed time past. So government deem it necessary to reintroduce it because we know that we live in a cash economy where people will require money for everything. So government is saying, no, as long as you are a civil servant, you are an employee, you don't need to have cash to have what you want. So we started, like you said, we piloted with three institutions. It was launched like August of 2021, and then it officially became operational in April of 2022. So it means that we've gone one year since we started operating the LPA, and we started with these three institutions. And now as we can speak, as we speak, we have up to 18 institutions that are right now on the LPA, and we're intending to add all 103 government institutions on the LPA. We intend to open it due to the demand of civil servants across the country because they thought that some of the colleagues are benefiting from aid from other institutions, and you know, so they thought that they need to be included. So government is trying to address that issue, and we're trying to expand it across the country. So you 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 started this program. This scheme started since, uh, let's say, a couple of years now. And uh, looking at one of three entities we have, you have about eighteen. It doesn't it look so like this slow uh, migrating everyone on board because if one of three. Well, what has been the, the the problem? Okay, first of all, that's why we 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 try to pilot the process. We try to pilot it because we wanted to see as to whether it will be feasible enough. No, for us to manage okay. because my you when we started we we, we often i wouldn't have an automated system so just a manual approach so we thought that starting with few institutions will help us you know efficiently effectively manage it but now that we we've seen some of the challenges we'll try to work on some of those challenges that's why we intend to expand it to see how best we can accommodate other institutions you know so, uh, Mr. Suare, you handling uh, one of those there. Can you want to tell all the steps? Uh, what, what what are the processes that one has to follow in becoming and uh, to benefit from the LPS scheme? All right. So, what have, qualifies you to become yeah a beneficiary? We have few steps, and the first thing is you must be a GOL employee. GOL, what you mean? Employee, government of Liberia employee. You should okay. be employed with a government with the government of Liberia. Okay. So that's the first thing. Secondly, you must not be, you should know that um, you must not be any debt. Okay. Maybe with the bank or maybe some some other recognized credit unions. So because if you are indebted to the bank which is the 33.3 of your salary will be deducted through the bank, then you might not be qualified for the LPA because your salary might not be enough to, to do the two courting. So then also you have to proceed to your HR to know your credit limit. So maybe you will, maybe you, well, you want to explain for the way you say credit limit. Uh, yeah. how, how are we? Yeah. Just so, so that we have the different, different stages. So okay. somebody who's a cleaner, yeah. office attendant, yeah. they have their own credit limit based on the salary, okay. their salary. So up to a director level, so it varies. So you will have to go to your HR and ask them, okay, because the HR will actually be trained so to know how to go about these things. So you have, they will have to explain to you, no, you can credit up to 600 US dollars. Based on your salary. Based on yeah, your salary. salary this salary yeah. allows you. Yeah. yeah. So after you should have gather information about your credit uh, limit, then you will go to, we have specific vendors that we are working with within the LPA scheme. So you will have to go to one of the vendors and carry your valid ID card, which is your employment ID card. Why you don't have employment at UK? You have just in the uh, national ID. Well, we are trying to work on that, but 
once you call your entity name, the most of the vendors know the entities that it will because from our end, okay, we tell the vendor this institution is a part, and you know, so with that, because right now we don't have ID cards, a lot of the in, uh, institutions do not have their working ID card, so you can use your 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 national ID card, get there, talk with a vendor, what the things that you want within your credit city. That's why you'll be requesting for, and upon receiving your uh, pro forma, then you can go back to your institution, to your HR, informing them this is what you want, and they will also forward it to civil service agency, and we will do the next proceedings for you to pick up your team. But the process is not that hard; it's something like a one one day process, depending on the the time you will submit your forms for the credit. So like I said, you will return the, the, the invoice that you apply the for. The invoice is, that is the first thing you have to go and get the invoice. Invoice, the yeah. The invoice performer, from, yeah. From, from, the, from the, the, vendor. the vendor, right? Yeah. And then uh, the, you have to go through the HR and everything, they advise you on that. Yeah. How 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 rapid, how, how speedy is the process? Well, like any I said. Any of you, Peter, uh, or any of you can. So like I said, it's a one day process. So apparently, this morning, maybe I left the office, went to the, let's say, Cimenco or to LR and Sons. Maybe made inquiry on what I want. And they gave me the invoice, the performer. Then I take it back to my institution. Once it is done, before the day end, we do our part from the CSA by sending the vendor the information. And we'll tell you the next day, go and pick up your items. So it's also based on the time that you will submit your invoice okay uh, uh let me please, just buttress. Yeah, you're fine go okay, ahead okay let me buttress uh yeah. she, okay let me just lay 33.3 percent she she spoke about yeah yeah that, you know is in accordance with the decent way i from the labor law that not more than 33.3 percent of staff salary should be deducted for 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 any reason so that's why we try to observe that and that is a ceiling and you know or, or, or limit in, let me just be practical. No, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I like to be practical and put about 33.3%. Yeah. So it varies based on your net income. So assuming that you have your net income of $200 as your net income, 33.3% of that that amount will get about $59. It times about six months and it will give you $399. Okay. So for someone who makes $200, your credit ceiling is $399. You can't go above that. Of course, it will vary from one individual to another because of the you know, variation in, in, your, in your salary range. It will not be the same for someone who makes $500 or someone who makes $1,000. So the higher your, 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 how to call it, your salary, your net income, be the higher your, your credit you just, you just spoke about yeah. $200. Peter, I just, let me just hold you there. And I want us to, because everybody is listening and then civil servants are at every level in terms of education. And so I want us to understand this. So, if you talk about 200, you just started from 200. It says that it must start from 200. It does or, not have, it does not, in fact, in fact, is in fact, is for all civil service credit, regardless of your salary limit. Uh -huh, okay. So even if you make $100, okay. you can still take LPE. We only deducted 33.3%, I mean, of that $100. That's all. We can go above it. So okay. regardless, even someone who makes fifty dollars, you still have attempt to take. They say cut your code according to your size. Okay. So if you know you make fifty dollars, well, no, no, seven seven make fifty dollars. Nobody, makes, nobody yeah. makes fifty dollars. We're just trying to be practical as well. So no matter how low your salary could be, I'm just talking about at low at fifty dollars. There are attempts that you can still take because we know that the credit ceiling could even be more than your net income. Like someone who make two hundred dollars, your credit ceiling is three hundred nine dollars, which is more above your income. So your ceiling exceeds your net income. So how, just like did, the, is so how the deduction months. done? How is it done? Yeah, it uh, is it that they're going to deduct it whole sum? That is just deduction. Yeah. Deduction is done over the period of six months. Okay, six months. That's why they say take now, pay small, small. That's the motto of the LPA. Okay, yeah, take, take now, now pay, pay small, small, small. We'll be taking it for a salary, small, small. And you're not, and you're not feeding months. too. You are not oh, feeding after yeah. six months. So if I make it two hundred, I can go for television, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. make $200, you can go for, 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 for flash screen. Flash screen. Yes, smart. I know that child in our house have been denied this privilege because their father or mother makes very small salary. So in order to save care, sometimes you need saving, saving, saving to buy one flash So screen. if I make it 200, I can go for cement? 
to start being host. Because everybody has to be host now. I mean, yeah. They give you the opportunity for people to be host. You make three hundred dollars, you can go for fifty bags of cement. Wow. Two hundred dollars, one make two hundred, you can fifty bags of cement. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is good. Oh, well, folks, this is the civil service hour. Today we are discussing LPA. LPA. Take. You say take now and pay small, pay small, small, right? small yeah. Take now and pay small, small. Can you imagine? Make two hundred. I can get a big flat screen set in, flat in, screen. in your in your house, right? Yeah, but yeah, it. take something. They say you should take something. We try to be a little bit practical and low to. Uh, they say take something that and uh, based on your salary now. Don't yeah. be get two hundred and say you won't go for car. No, no. But they have the other thing. How the car business or the air the ticket? How, how, where are we going with it? Because the other day the GG said. You only need to bring the people getting a ticket, the ticket people. So too. gradually we're getting there. We've been able to identify a few, you know, agencies and we send a draft of the MOU agreement because we know that the LP is a tripartite agreement okay. between government, labor, the banking institution and those vendors. So we're trying to bring those, you know, ticket traveling vendors and then we've written MOU to a few other vendors who are waiting their response. But we're getting there gradually. So we just want to deal with the bread and butter issue. Okay, yeah. let's deal with the bread and butter issue. Bread and butter issue. So, so yeah. uh, any of you, right? People have been benefiting. Why, why? Because the people, they say that win-win thing. When they say win-win thing, why, what do we mean by the win-win thing? That is, who, who are those benefiting? Is it benefiting the government? Is it benefiting civil service? Is it benefiting the vendor? How, how is it benefiting people when they say win-win? It's, it's, it's benefiting everyone. Okay. It's benefiting how? the how? government because... It helps at least the government to achieve the proper agenda. Okay. All right. It helps. It's also a part of the public because if you look at this whole thing, the vendors are going to what? Uh, the sales, they are okay. going to increase sales. Sure. And once goods are moving fast on the counter, it means what? There'll be a tax return. They'll be paying okay. taxes. They'll be paying taxes. It'll be Good very time. effective, which, yeah, which will help government to you know achieve their developmental agendas and what of you. On the side of civil servants, they also acquiring properties. A lot of people are building horses yeah. as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Building materials will make the highest sale through the LPA with building materials and cement. Okay. People are interested in building, you know. And at the end of the day, when you finish building, you still come back to all the other goods. You need to furnish the apartment. Okay. So you come back, you need television and police. Yeah. So we provide all these things to make our people life better. Okay. Whatever it takes to make their life better. And okay. also uh, at a very lowest rate, which is the 5%. 5% low rate. Wow. Yeah. So let me just explain about that 5%. Okay. You see that 5%, that's why the bank comes in. The banks are interested because bank will not get involved in a business if they're not getting profit. Sure, sure. So I it's mean, because of that saying. 5%, the banks decide to come in. The banks say, okay, in the agreement here, we go and pay the, when it's, when the, when the staff go and take goods, maybe a staff went and take cement, 50 bags of cement. At the end of the month, the, the, the vendors, cement co they will process that, that invoice and forward it to the secretary of CSA. Then we will write the bank, say, oh, bank, your pay Simenko for so-and-so -so amount of cement that we're taking. Immediately, the bank will come and pay Simenko. Wow. Now, when the deduction is done, it's 5% discount. The 5% discount that's coming from staff is going to what? To the bank. Okay. Just 5% flat rate. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this is interesting. I mean, it's good. You know what it means when we talk about the well-being, the welfare of civil servants. This is a scheme that is doing so much there because, like you, you uh, said, people now are building. Most of the goods that are going from the vendor that are like building materials and other things, right? So we want to say, folks, this is the civil service out today. We are talking about the expansion, and we'll come back to the issue of expansion first. You were inviting, writing lectures, going through all of these uh, challenges to invite people to come over. Why is it this time around you want to take it to people instead? Because, I mean, why you want to okay. do that now? Okay. In, you see, initially, the director general wrote up to 80 institutions inviting them okay. to take advantage of the LPA through their, their, their heads. Yeah. All right, but then we notice that there's this laissez faire attitude towards the process. Okay, the bosses they feel that it's, I mean, maybe it's not going to benefit them directly. I mean, perhaps that could be the reason, but yeah. I believe that the staff needed so dearly. Some staff will call say, Oh, why are we now on the other? They say, But we've written your bosses, they have not yet responded. So, because of that slow pace, the other general said, Okay, but then we're not going to wait to deal with the bosses, we're going to send a circular to all the HRs inviting them on this one workshop and explain about the LPA and just enroll them. 
instead of passing through, you know, I believe the bosses will have because once you have the pressure from the staff, definitely you have to succumb to it. So that's why we intend to just rule it once and for all instead of going bit by bit because the interest from the bosses is not encouraging. So we have about between 65,000 to 70,000 of civil servants, right, in the Republic of Liberia, an estimation of that. How capacitated are we with respect to you know, if, or migrating everyone on 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 a scheme at once? Okay, there are, there are a couple of things that we're dealing with. Okay. Initially, when we started, people submitted their document, you know, hard copies of the document, how to come to CSA, submit hard copy. So we're trying to make it easy. True mailing system. Our institution, you apply for it. Those who are supposed to sound talking about the HR of your institution with the administrator of that institution. Once they sign it, your HR are going to scan that document and just send it to us. In recent time, I can tell you that just in three, four days, we see up to 36 applications and we process them effectively through mills. Okay. The milling system makes it easy. But moreover, we we trying to see how best we can introduce this automated system. Yeah, because it makes it easier that wherever part of Liberia you are, you can easily apply. We want civil service themselves to just go through that portal and just apply and then be able to get their goods very easy, make it much more flexible. That's what we're working on, which will be done later. But for now, we believe that we have the capacity to accommodate through that mailing system. And we have a very, very much effective response, especially from the secretariat. You just talk about people you want for every Liberian, and you I hope you are condescend that uh, Liberians are everywhere, civil servants are everywhere, and not just in Morovia or its immediate environs, right? So how can somebody who is in my county, Grand Cru, or in um, Olo County, Maryland County, or in Lofa County, are those, you know, low far to reach areas, how can they benefit from this scheme? Well, so right now, like we have we have this of uh, secretary chat room as your institution gets enrolled we enroll you in that chat room meaning we have this i believe that you say that okay internet is not all over the place but it starts from the hr within because all ministries have what their link or the head office in central monrovia and what have you so from the inst um, how do you call it, the, the hinterland if they apply from that level they can forward a document to the hr in monrovia yeah. Then we can continue the process. That may take some time. It could be slower okay. than those that reside. Obviously, it will because to you know submit it to the nearest is going to take some time. But we believe that we can achieve that. Good. Yeah, yeah you just add. I mean, we want all of the answers. We want all of the answers from from the concerns people have raised, and they, I mean, people are interested so much. Yeah. So also we have this is our training coming up to train all of the HROs and the person responsible that will be doing the LPA. So what are the like most times we have uh, county HROs, they will also be involved because they play a crucial role in dealing with our people upstate. So when we are doing these trainings, we will make sure we involve them to make the work easier for people that are in the heat land to apply. And I'm sure that it's also going to help speed it, speed up the process. And also we have our regional offices in the federal counties. So you can easily reach them and it also can help to automate the, 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 the documents to us. So, so folks, we have all, all, all two personalities, uh, our deputy director from the welfare services division, uh, mistress Darlene, Dexin Suarez, she's deputy director uh, at the division, and we have assistant director Peter Fuller. They are here discussing expanding the, the LPS scheme to all of the 15, the one of three uh, spending entities of government. This time around, we're not just inviting, they are carrying out there to the institution and making sure that those institutions admit, uh, no, um, admit their, their, their staff on this scheme because everybody got a benefit. Folks, this is the Civil Service Hour, your ERBC, to join the conversations. Yo, you can join us on this number, 0880514096, 0880514096. We are discussing uh, LPA, LPA, LPA. So back to you, uh, yeah. 
We in the, uh, the media you are talking about your boss is in Bone County in uh, Lord Nima County. Hello. 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 Oh, your name Hello. and where you calling from? Hello. Um. Hello. Hello. Your name and where you calling from? My name is Arthur Nipan. Arthur Nipan. And I call you from Osorado. I'm a civil servant. Oh, okay. But the civil servant issue that we are discussing, I hear your people talking only in US dollars. They're not discussing Liberian dollars. And majority of us are paying Liberian dollars. Okay. They will listen to that. They will respond to that. Obviously. So you are confusing the people in the hitter land. Other of most of us will pay in Liberian dollars. So we have to discuss Liberian dollars so we can know our hitter. Okay, Mr. Jinpan, thank you for your point. So we just keep listening and we'll follow. Uh, they will explain to that. Thank you. So he, Mr. Jinpan was just talking about people. Are people only pay in uh, librarian datas? Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the payment method. Yeah. But um, on the payroll, yeah. the ATAP system, yeah, okay. the calculation is done in USD. Okay. That's why... The, your salary is going to be deducted. The deduction is going to be done on the payroll before payment is made. Okay. So it just has to do with disbursement. Your entire salary is in USD. Government budget is in USD. So time to pay, that's when what? They convert your salary into a LD and pay you. But the calculation, everything is in USD. And then we're going to do the deduction before we can pay you your 8020. So, but I think her concern is that uh, why if you're talking about the threshold, no, right? Ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling. No. How, how, how can he find, which category would he find himself if he's, he's paid that's, into like Brenda? That's, that's, that's where, that's where the HRS come in. Oh, okay. Because part of this whole procedure is that we say why? You should go to your HR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Proceed to your HR. So that's all the procedure. Let's go to the procedure. Let's take a full time okay. on the procedure. So the yeah. six steps, I think it was explained before. Yeah, go ahead. They say be a BGO employee. Okay. It means you're fully employed and you are on the ETA system. Okay. You must not be in debt. That is more than 33.3% of your salary, your net salary. Okay. Proceed to your HR to know your credit limit. So know your credit limit. Also, you get to know your actual net income. Hundred percent income is in USD. Okay. It's not the one that is disbursable income. I talk about the one that is calculated. Okay. It's in USD. So once you go to your HR, HR will tell you, okay, my man, you're making two hundred dollars. So that two hundred dollars now they divide the eighty twenty portion come to or the or they decide to change everything LD they pay to you, but actually it's in USD. So once you know your credit limit, your your net income, you get to know your credit your credit ceiling. Visit our vendors. Our vendors are City Builders, Cemento, Home City, Samsung Electronic, Narage Builder, and LRS Son. For City Builder, only the ones that is to EADB Junction, Cemento to Freeport, Home City is on 7th Street, Samsung is down Randall Street, Narage Brothers at EADB Junction, and LRS Son, Red on Brush. These are the vendors that you should. That you should that, that you should visit. So you proceed to these vendors and get your your pro forma invoice. The pro forma invoice contains the list of items that you need with the prices attached. Just say, oh, I'm a civil servant from so and so ministry, and our vendors are already aware they know them. So they're just going to give you an invoice, and then you carry it to your HR and complete the process from that end. They will they will forward that information to us for further processing. Like she said, my, my, my boss lady said, it takes just, you know, daytime. Depends how soon, your, how responsive your people are to your ministry. Because we know some other bosses, or the deputy director, or the, or the, the assistant minister for administration is not here to sign, or the HR is not here to sign. But we can assure you that once it is processed from that end, and it lands, or it hits our email, definitely you receive it that same day. Or in the, so it'll be the highest two days, most two days. So after that, you can return to your HR of the invoice, like I just said. So after that, we're going to inform your HR that your goods are ready for pickup. Then you just go to the vendors with the same document. You know, your HR is going to give you a copy of that document. The same document you present to them, they're going to give, give you a copy of it to proceed to the vendors and pick up your goods. So why if I, I took maybe uh, zinc from this uh, vendor and then uh, when the process, while the process is ongoing and you're doing a deduction, is it possible that I take another item? While the deduction is ongoing? Yeah. We call that tap up. It's called, it's called, it's called tap up. Yes, yeah. It's, it's, it's working. The tap up now is with the same vendor. 
but when I'm talking is that I took zinc. Then this time around, I know you're doing a deduction. I want to take a cement. Is you it went possible? to another tender. Yeah, another yes. vendor. It is possible. But it should possible. fall within the same territory. Yes, here. Okay. So so let me just let me just say, let me tell you, let me just say how this Go ahead. Go ahead. If you know that your credit ceiling is 200. Okay. Your credit ceiling at three at 200. You can't take more than 200. Okay. But the first time the goods you want you to, that get 100 hours worth of goods. Okay. So you say get 100 hours mm-hmm. more left. Okay. No, that is not used. Okay. Your use wallet. It's called your wallet. Your use wallet. Yeah, okay. So after three months, you can still go back again and take, you know, another another item. But just that the deduction stay going to continue within that six months. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just saying that you 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 were we were having a discussion. You said your boss is in Bond County in Lima and carrying out some of the awareness and the you know when it comes to the LPA. You talk about now expanding. The, the the scheme to all of the these uh, civil servants and you know they are everywhere how prepared now are we to when people have been migrated i'll ask the question of apparently asking for to because somebody in plebo and wants a zinc and he's not coming must he come to Morovia and take this looking at the difficulty in getting the, the conveying the goods to those, those points or you're going to find a vendor in plebo or in grances and to, to for that the person can get a goose from. So, so like we said, yeah. uh, we are also dealing with, we are going to negotiate with vendors in the rural areas okay. to avoid our people coming to town using huge you know, transportation costs. You know, have you bought? Our team is already there. Like I said, uh, we have our regional officers okay. who will join with us that we will go after the HR training we will be going to the counties to meet with those vendors. Okay. So, uh, most especially those uh, that are within that deals with some of the things that we're dealing with in Morovia. Okay. Yeah, so we will have that conversation with them. We gave, him, we gave them our MOU to look at them. So, when, when it is agreed upon, then we come back to town and we will also be dealing with our regional office to help speed up the process for people there. So if somebody want to take zinc or maybe steel raw or crush rag, whatever it is, they don't have to come to Morovia. Okay. No. They can remain right there, go to the next center, and just once that center is approved by the CSA, then they can pick up the thing. That is good. That is good. I mean, we we get in there, and this is good for us. So, for you just talk about the regional offices. So, I would just uh just tell you exactly, just briefly uh, tell you where we have our regional offices. That is the CSA. So, if you for those in Grand Cru County, Maryland County, River G, and Granger County, the CSA offices in Zoyju. We have our Nefred go up there. I mean, he's right there. So, if you they, they are plans to have CSA represented in all of the 15 counties. But until then, uh, we have regional presence. And uh, we have, so we say in Swedu, we have for those in Sano County, Maryland, Grand Chile, and River G in uh, Maryland, and uh, as well as Grand Cru right in Swedu. For those in Lofa County, Bone County, and Nima County, right in Banga City, we have uh, our regional office. There's uh, That is our man, Stevie Keto. Is there just contact? So for those within civil servants within the three counties, right in Banga City, that is those in Low Five, Nima County, and Bon County, right in Banga City, we have our civil service office there. For those in Bapulu County, Grand Cape Bank County, and Bomi County, we have our office right in Todmanburg. Our man Francis Wolber is there. He is right in Todmanburg. Good. Our CSS office is there. Our man Jonathan uh, Reeves is in Grand Basso County and he is there as a regional officer for uh, civil servants in uh, uh, Riverside County, Grand Basso County, and Magibi County. Right in uh, Big Island City, we have our man our office there. So you, for those within that bracket, you can just go right there. So you're talking about regional office. Then we come to Morovia. Those in Montserrat County, for sure, looking at the proximity uh, to our our central office, uh, you can come right within the Ellen Johnson Sirleaf uh, Ministerial Complex, where we have uh, our head office, our front desk executives will lead you straight, no, straight to the, the how they call the welfare services division. So we just start to inform you where we have our regional offices while the LPA scheme is going. So we're so back up uh, to our discussion, folks. If you uh, 
have an interest in the conversation, 0805140960, 0805140960. We are discussing LPS scheme. So we're coming back to uh, so far. Let's talk about the good things that this LPA is doing, Peter, or oh, oh, Darlene. Let's talk more about the good things because this seems to be so good. People now, unlike the past when Papa couldn't go with black plastic bag, I think this time now only black plastic bag. Now, uh, oh, Mama going with with cement, going with building materials, going with television set. You don't need to keep the for twenty years to keep money before you buy those things. So let's talk about the good things. Yeah. So what interests me more is the fact that Silver Sevens are taking ownership of this game. Okay. Seriously, and more importantly, the if you look at the, the attempts that people are going for, you know that they are not over you. Sure. Yeah. Since the inception of this whole exercise, this whole stuff, we've gone not less than half a million okay. worth of goods have been procured through the LPS scheme. And sometimes a few months ago, I think around around February, when we start to expand it like bringing in the police into the LPA. I'll tell you that the, the number of bag of semen so the, so the, the police trooping have up. escalated. That's, it's overwhelming. Wow. They are going middle for semen. You know, not I say going for flash screen or whatever, yeah. but they're going straight for building material. Straight wow, for building does. material. So just that the unfortunate part here for now is that we only have city builder that is the only building material on the, on the scheme. But that's one of the main reasons why we're trying to include more other building materials. So I just want to tell civil servants, if you have that contact with that building materials too, in your community and whatever you that want to join the LPA, we are also opening up, we can go into that agreement. We're talking about proximity. Someone living in, in Banjo, you know, and you have your project there. Imagine coming with the builder here, they'll be able to take your goods. It's cost intensive. But that store, that city, that building material store within Banjo or in your in your local, you can also inform them. Once they agree to come on board, we accommodate them and reward them. Like that, now it'll be easier for you to have access to those goods to take them to your to, to, to your site. But trust you me, civil servants are benefiting from it. And even the vendors are hugely benefiting from it is because what the sales have increased. I learned that the vendors now, most of them knock at your doors. They want to, they want to get on the scene. They see their friends making profit. Oh, and yes. Then, oh, yeah. Vendors, vendors, as we speak right now, we have, I, I don't know what people know, Oka Deco on 16th Street. Oka Deco is highly interested. We have the MOU so to be signed by the Ministry of Finance is at the Ministry of Finance there. We're trying to do a follow up. We we'll also bring in local, local, you know, furniture. Uh -huh. oh, my eyes. What are you have librarian business? That's what that, we're yeah. trying to do. We're encouraging librarian businesses, especially the furniture. Those that can face those beds, you face all the furniture, you keep them there in the doors, nobody taking them, whatever you, you know, because it's not going. But once we create that market, it is going faster. Definitely, production will increase and librarians will benefit. So we also want to encourage librarian businesses, those that are involved in furniture, those that are involved in different, different, you know, things that, you know, you think are How the wedding, wedding shops? Wedding shop. Yeah. Anything that has wedding, to do with building, yeah. because factories, yeah. people anything, black involved. factories, anything that has to do with, 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 with construction, the wedding, we try to invite another wedding, we have an MOU for another wedding shop, but we just want to say that whenever you have, each, whenever you, you have, identify any local vendor within your area, be a wedding, one of you. Just let us know at the civil service agency. We can save them an MOU and get them incorporated because one of the motive here is to also empower librarian business owners. Yeah, to beat them up at least to create a market for them to compete with the other, you know, with the other vendors. Yeah, uh, just to add up to that. Uh, give us all of the not just Not just coming to join the LPA, but you must first day be your taxpayer. Yeah, almost ask them, what yeah. are those so things you look for? Yeah. Vendors should also be paying tax to government. You got with the level of receipt and what have you, once they are registered with the government, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can include it. It makes it easier that at least they, as we gave them customers, they will also be able to pay tax in full. Okay. It's, it's, it's yeah. part of the criteria. It's part okay. of our criteria. Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. what are those yeah. things you look for in, uh, you know, businesses it's, before it's you part of the criteria. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just to, just to add up, the, 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 the essence of the LPA to help save our service. So maybe I'm working for $300 and 
and I want to maybe do my foundation, my house foundation, but I cannot read it safe looking at the expenses that I have home. So with me crediting with from the LPL of 5%, every six months I can improve on my project because I can go to Cemento after obtaining my 50 or 100 bags of cement. I can take that, maybe looking at the city, I can go to city, better get still where I can do my foundation within six months. Now, that money will be cut on within six months. So those guys that I got working for me, I can pay them now for whatever. The balance yeah, of from the yeah, that is left with me to do the work. After another six months, I can also go for more seamen, and you know, steel rods and things to carry up. So in the next two years, I'm going to have a completed building. So okay. it also helping. Now also, we have the, the Eden's Capital and the Fin Credit scheme, the, the salary advance credit uh, schemes that are with us. So school is about to open. Okay. Uh, maybe my pay is not on time. So I can also go there and apply for maybe salary advance to go and register my children. And that well, money... you just talked about the 33 brain, uh, like you say that according to central bank and the labor decent labor law at uh, what would you call So it? so the Finn and Eden 360 is under the LPA. Okay. So apparently I did not use my credit CD, yeah, all of my CDs from my wallet. So with the Stanley, I can also create do salary advance from that program. So I can take two, three hundred dollars, go and register my children at least while waiting for salary to do the next thing. So okay. it's also helping, and you know, it will also ease the tension on parents. So at least they can over the thing, you know, in kind of pressure, whatever pressure, it is. Pressure, pressure, yeah. now, pressure, right? Yeah, so. So, okay, let's come to this. I know most people will say, oh, don't talk about that video. What if somebody is going through this process, took a loan or the LPA and uh, 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 unfortunately the person passed out. How does uh, the the vendor or the bank and you know, get back the money yeah so you have this this um government policy or government own goodwill let me goodwill just say goodwill from government, yeah. from government whenever yeah. someone someone dies government keeps that person name on the payroll for three months and the essence of that is to aid the family in preparing for death you know burial and everything preparing for for for, for burial so within that time, if someone dies, the HR, that's why we're working directly in line with the HRs. The HR are going to alert us that those oh, so-and-so person have passed away. So before they get that person of the period within that three months, we're going to do a one-time deduction from yeah. that person's so salary. So government's adult, yeah. government's way. So we are running out of time. Hello? Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, how are you? Fine, Chief. Your name is what you Yeah, I'm James Aku calling from Magibi County, specifically near Kagata. Okay, so what's your concern? Uh, I'm a civil servant. Yeah. Nice by profession. Okay. Um, I'm a bit worried. Uh, I don't know, as you have said, if you are uh, a civil servant and getting on your program. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the city data and what have you, and I live in Kakata, you don't have the uh, building. Hello? Hello, James, we, we, we can get you. Okay, I think James was talking about the distance where he is to. Okay, but we, we running out of time. I think we just want to wrap up. Uh, uh, you just want to yeah, uh, answer yeah. him that we can just go. Uh, so, so I think he meant to say, well, they got other vendors there that are that, you know, part of the LPA. Yeah. So how is it possible for them to, you know, get goods for those places? Well. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we are saying we are going out to reach out to some of those vendors that are in the counties. It is very true. City builder might not be in Kakata, but there are other vendors that deal with uh, building materials. Sure. So we will negotiate with them to enable our people be able to get their goods from there. Once they are registered, be a local or whatever, we can make sure we include them on the LPA. Okay. Yeah. So when you briefly, uh, when do you uh, want to have this workshop? Uh, be invited all of the HRs. So as a party comment, just tell the time and uh, yes. 
Yeah, right. We are working up modalities to make sure that we don't need this all cost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, your Peter, your parting comment, then we'll kind of direct, we'll close up. I think we are. Yeah. So, now. in parting, I just want to encourage civil servants yeah. across government. Sometimes it's, it's difficult after working in government for a certain amount of years, people expect you to show something for it. And we live in a society, given our minimum income, you know that saving is very, very difficult. To save is, is, is rigid. So that's why government introduced the LPO program. If you're not able to save, invest. There are two things in economic, saving investment. You either save or you invest. Okay, okay. And so Darryl, so Darryl, we just say, close us up. So we want to say thank you to our listening audience. And thank you to ELPC for having us again today. So for our people out there, our civil servants who want to say those businesses that you know that are registered with the government, that are not part of the LPA, encourage them to be your part and to help you at least be able to achieve something at the end of the day to show to your children, your grandchildren that when I work for government, I was able to pay the house, I was able to furnish this place, I was able to pay your fees and what have you. So we are begging you, whatever you don't understand, please, Come to the CSA, we'll walk you through the process to enable you get better understanding. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Those were the voices of uh, this very senior staff from the Welfare Services Division of the Civil Service Agency, your Deputy Director, Mistress Darrell Dixon Soiree, and Assistant Director Peter Fuller. They were discussing and led the conversation on LPA scheme. Very uh, wonderful uh, idea and you know, a scheme that was created by this government to help civil servants and uh, to meet the needs. Of this is the Civil Service Hour, your ERBC. I've been the presenter, Joseph Enneswin, Director for Com uh, Communications.